On today's expert talks, we have Mr. Hartog Streicher. He's part of the Dino King Conservation Facility, who have the Big Five as well as the Black and the White Rhino. And I've heard that the Black Rhino gets born angry. On today's episode, we're going to process the danger that is poaching. We're going to process how much the poachers actually get for a rhino horn. We're going to talk about the elephant tusks, the weight, and we're going to dive into the dangers of hunting with dogs. We're going to dive into the snares that are placed by these poachers to catch lions, zebras, and all other animals. They do amazing work. That's why we invited them, just to share some of the knowledge that they've got and uh, the need and where we as the community can come in and assist them. Next to me, as always, Anna-Marie Mayer. Thank you. Welcome to the show, Sam. Thank you for... Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, sharing... Anna-Marie. Welcome. Nice to be here. Thank you for sharing your valuable time. Pleasure is mine. So I think let's start off with maybe speaking about the facility, um, you know, the size and more or less roughly, uh, you know, the the amount of animals. What is Dino King? What is mm. Dino King? What is it about? I know we can go and camp there. I know there's facilities to go and rent chalets. I've been there many, many years ago, but it was a very, very nice experience. You can drive with your own vehicle. You don't necessarily need to go and, mm. and uh, rent a safari vehicle. You can go and view that. But tell us about the it. The two-minute Reader's Digest. Yes. Right. Bobby, yes. Uh, Dino King Game Reserve is absolutely a wonderful place. It's approximately 22,000 hectares. Wow. Um, it's quite big, but in terms of game uh, or nature reserves, it is actually quite small. Okay. It is also one of the youngest. Dinu King was born roughly 12, 13 years ago after many years of research by the government. It was a blue IQ project. And at that stage, there were numerous of these little small like we call them my plotters, some better than others. But the um, somebody had a vision and they said, if we can combine all these places and add some of the government property, and they were heavily dependent on the goodwill of the then landowners, they established the Dinuken Game Reserve. So in 10 years, it's actually a wonderful story of success. So... Initially, when the government started the place, they helped with the fencing and they helped with some of the legalities. And now 10, 11 years down the line, we're actually going to the next phase. So we are busy with proclamation, which will um, let the park fall under the NEMPA Act, which is great because then the park has a lot more uh, legal backing and it's a lot safer in terms of there cannot be land claims, there cannot be... Um, uh, mining in the future, and it just helps the park to be sustainable. So currently there's about 80 product owners. A product owner is somebody where you can go camp or where you can go and rent a chalet. And the park is roughly two different business models. On the southern side, there's a lot more properties um, that offer accommodation. And the southern side also offers what we call the self-drive route. So you can pay your conservation ticket, you can buy your self-drive route, and you can in your own vehicle, which you obviously bought from Mitmac Motors, come and drive around there and see all our lovely animals. The northern side has got a different um, business model. Some of those lodges are more exclusive, more expensive, and um, that's probably for the divorcee that bought your Panamera on yes, one sir. of your yes, previous sir. ads. He took the, the, the young lady that he met at the country club. With the two kids? No, the kids are at uh, the ex-husband because she's also divorced. Because ah, that's how we pay them up. I like that's it. how we pay them up. Yes, sir. So <laughs> on the northern side, it's only self-drive. Uh, it's no self-drive. It's only game drive. So okay. you go to one of the lodges, you purchase <laughs> your uh, um, ticket, and they take you on an exclusive um, game drive. So there's something for everything, from the cheap tent to the very expensive massage and private butler and private chef included. Included. Okay, great. And and in terms of animals, I know we've got the big five at Dino King. Uh, is the is the camp the southern side and the northern side are divided, or is it, no. are the big five are roaming free? The so big five roam all over the place. Okay. So. Um, 
obviously, the more you drive around, the more you see. Um, so, mm-hmm. but animals are also sort of semi-seasonal. Okay. Although the park is not big enough to migrate, we have found that the northern side of the park has got more what is referred to as soot felt, and the, um, the southern side is more sour grass. So, we'll find that in the good rain seasons, like a summer period, there's a lot more game up in the northern side. And in winter, when that grass is more or less depleted, some of the animals will come down to the southern side. But the lions and uh, all the other animals, rhinos, etc., they walk all over the park. There's no cage. It's not a zoo. It's a game reserve. Okay, great. And you, you, obviously the camping sites, are they just blocked off? All the, um, uh, all the lodges are fenced off uh, fenced to off. protect the people. But there are people, we call them that uh, the guys that are preparing for Botswana. They are some what we call bush camps. Some of them are unfenced and you sign an indemnity. Um, and those are the guys that like to rough it a bit. That's, so, that's, that's the guy that comes there with his own rooftop tent and probably his Ford and... They Maybe a conqueror trailer. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and you, you get to experience, you know, the animals at night when they're roaming around you and... and yeah, yeah. You know, it's amazing. I've, I've also done quite a few trips into Africa. I love my 4x4 experiences. And it's amazing how your stomach sort of vibrates if you hear a lion I can roar imagine. near you, you know, suddenly you, you realize how small you actually are. Yes. And yes. you realize how perfect everything was created. Yes, agree. But Love yeah, it. even with the fence cams, that I know for sure, they're close enough for you still to enjoy oh, yes, 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 that. Yes, yes. So it's not as if you're out of it, it's still close enough that you can yeah. actually see them at the fence. Yeah. So that, that experience is for the... The normal family. Yes. A lot of the newer lodges um, went over to what is called the Kenyan fence, which is a fairly low fence with a 45 degree um, to the front. So the theory is that the distance of the 45 down is exactly the same as the height of a normal fence. So it's the animals there, they know that the wires are uh, electrified and they respect that. So... um, Except the elephants sometimes, they'd like to challenge that. And uh, yeah, they're naughty. The, the elephants are naughty. The elephants are naughty. Okay, good. So let, let's jump into the, the, the actual problem. And, and that is, you, you know, you, you've got poachers that are placing snares and catching mm. all sorts of animals from small springbuck all the way up to zebras. You, you mentioned yeah. that they, they sometimes catch lions. You, you know, what, what, do, what is the intention? Do they catch, do these poachers catch the small animals and, and, and kill them and eat them? Or what is the actual intention with a, with a zebra, yeah. for example, and then lion? Bobby, there's two sides of the coin. On the one side, you've got your syndicates <coughs> or your professional poachers. They, they are people that plan their, their, their poach or their um, theft quite uh, meticulously. They're heavily armed and it's, it's a syndicate. Um, those people are currently uh, very active in Kruger and some of the Natal parks, etc. And that is organized crime. On the other side of the coin, you've got your bushmeat um, poachers who will come in and they will in a night probably hang 50 to 100 snares and it's totally indiscriminate. So what often happens, and we had a very unfortunate incident earlier the year, where they caught uh, some animals, uh, uh, some uh, buck in the snares. And the two of our beautiful lions came to, um, to eat on the meat and both lions were killed, uh, caught in the snares. And it was a very, very, very sad day for us. Um, the bad thing is it's totally indiscriminate. You don't know whether they catch a rhino or a, um, a zebra. It's almost you hope for the best, but what is the best? There's no there best. is that no is best. Just <clears throat> absolutely. Yes. And the horrific part is how these animals suffer. You know, um, most animals when they're caught in a snare take up to 24 hours to strangle to death. And it's absolutely, absolutely horrific. Is that done for food? 
versus the medicine. No, it's predominantly it's done for food. If you have a look and you can go and Google the Miracle 8, where one of our cheetah mothers were caught in a snare and she was obviously skinned and that was used for muti. But most of it is, is, is for the meat trade. And the sad part is very, very few of the animals that are snared are collected. So they will come and they'll cut off um, a hindquarter or something and leave the rest there. Um, sometimes they don't even come and collect the animal. Um, and it's a 24-hour job to try and protect the park. I, I want to find out from you because if it is, I'm, 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 I'm asking, is the law on the side of the poacher or is the law on, on, on the other side? What I'm, what I'm asking mm -hmm. is, if you can catch one of these poachers, is the is the chances of a successful prosecution and that person actually going to jail very high or, or is that person let go on like a 500 rand bail or a thousand rand bail and runs around in the street in a week? Yeah. Unfortunately, our legal system is flawed, like we all know. And um, we often catch these poachers and most of the time they get like a 50 or a 100 rand fine and they the, they well, actually stand that. and wait at the police station to ask for a lift back to wherever they stay to do the same luckily um, we've 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 become in, involved with some of the uh, police members mm -hmm. uh, that actually still want to uphold the law and over the last year we've totally changed our anti poaching strategy in Dinuking um, traditionally Game reserves have followed a fortification methodology. So we try and build higher fences, bigger walls, more cameras to keep the, uh, the, the poachers or unwanted people out. And that has proven that it doesn't work. So in terms of Dinuking, we have tried to involve the community more. We do a lot of community projects and we also have gone from a reactive to a totally proactive methodology. And if you look at our statistics, um, we, we um, managed to get po poaching to about 30% last year of what it was the year before. Amazing. Well done. Sure. Thank you. And uh, That's incredible. all the credit goes to the team. And this year so far, We've gone from the 30% 30, uh, 30 that we had last year, we've declined even further. We're currently standing on about 12% of what poaching was last year. Amazing. That's beautiful. Well done. It's, it's an incredibly satisfying job, but unfortunately, you know, it's a 24-hour job. It's a semi-military operation and a lot of technology goes into it and money. Now, unfortunately, if you're one of the big reserves that can charge six, eight or 10,000 rand a, a night that also owns the resort, they make money and they can afford it like Timbavati or Salvi, Salvi, Salvi Sand. Um, in our case, Dinu King was established firstly to create jobs for the people because after the Babalehi um, disintegration, and the, the, the Baputa Tswana disintegration, there were a lot of people without jobs. And Dinu King was originally started to create these jobs. Um, <clears throat> currently, we employ just over 800 people in all the lodges. Um, and the, the interesting thing about Dinu King is the game reserve does not own a lodge. The only money we get is through A, your self-drive fee and the conservation fee that you basically pay and levies that are paid by um, most of the people who live there. So we have to do a lot of projects to, to make money to, in order to fund it. You know, our APU this year will cost us uh, between three and four million rand. And that is to keep a team of people 24 seven on the ground, patrol fences. We've got a huge drone team that is um, uh, 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 called SPOTS, Strategic Protection of Threatened Species. They are independent in NPO. And um, in the last year, we've tried to get a lot of knowledge in the park. So we like to work with people, um, universities, use artificial intelligence, use drones, night sight. 
we're developing a lot of technology in the park that we like to share with other parks as well. But Amazing. it's a continuous battle. And, and you said it's a 24-hour job. So you, you, that means I'm, I'm processing that poaching doesn't only happen at night. No, no, no. Poaching no. happens during the day as well. During the day, during the night. There are times when it's more prevalent. Like, for example, this weekend is a long weekend. So there's a lot more people at home. And unfortunately, drugs and alcohol plays a huge role. Guys start drinking and smoking and popping a few pills and then they think they're invincible and they come into the park and they try to snare animals or shoot animals. Just Long, for the fun of just, it. Just, well, to have meat, to have a braai, to prove to somebody else how manly you are. And now other black period is usually in full moon. Um, full, full moon, because you can see they clearly. Can see, yeah. So okay, at full moon, sense. we often have up to five drones in the air to patrol the fences with night sight and thermal and fleur. And um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing to do. And it's actually um, quite satisfying to be part of such an operation. I, I can just imagine. Now we've touched now on the reason for mainly food. Let's go to the Muti side, and that is the bigger animals. Yeah, the Muti trade in South Africa has got different legs. On the one leg, there's the animals that they use, uh, like for example, the claws and some of the um, predominantly cat species and rhino horn. But there's also uh, a plant site where they come into the park and they decimate areas especially for bulbs and if you go to any muti shop you will see a lot of plant material there as well in my opinion whether you're taking plants or animals it's the same thing so it basically boils down to you're in a spot where you're not supposed to be and whether they're coming into the game reserve or trespassing into your property your house it's the same. It's the same thing. It's 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 a threat. I, I want to touch on, you, you know, the the big drive is for uh, obviously for ivory, for elephant tusks, and and obviously rhino horn. Mm. So so for for the guys too, you you mentioned it's a it's a professional poacher. It's a, it's a syndicate. It's organized crime. What is the because the risk is big. I mean, you you have to undergo. Um, you have to get past. Uh, five drones. Um, I mean, there's, there's people patrolling and, and the people patrolling are armed. So it is a dangerous uh, uh, activity that you're going to take part in. I understand that if you get caught, the justice system is not always. But in your case, you, you know, there is police people. There's many good police people out there. I know. Plenty. Plenty. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them work with us. Yes. But it falls, the crack <clears throat> is between the police, the, the, the um, investigator and the courts. There's a void. There's a void. But, but touching on, you, you know, what is a criminal going to get for a rhino horn? Let's start there. What is the, the risk-reward ratio? The guy who actually does the job, yes, he often gets between 10 and 50,000 rand. The guy who actually sells it eventually, he gets 250,000 and upwards for, for a rhino horn on the black market. 250,000. Yeah. But the, the, the actual poacher... And there's still a demand for this. There's still a, mon a demand for it. And the stupidity is if all of us cut our nails, we can probably grind it down and have the same product as what's in the rhino horn. But there's a, there's a, a belief that it has some magical... And, and does that get locally sold or does that get exported to China? Most of it gets exported to the East, not only China. Not only China. But... Okay. Um, yeah, most of the market is in the east. In the east. Yeah. Okay. And and what about the elephant tusks? Because I know that's a huge problem. Elephant tusk is a huge market, but um, some time ago, uh, some of the ivory sales were legalized. Okay. And the demand went down a little bit um, after that. But also, it's more for jewelry, not necessarily for any multi purposes. Okay. So, elephant tusks is more jewelry. Yeah. And, and it's still a problem. What does an elephant tusk go for? Anything from 10 to, depending if it's a huge one, can reach 50,000 rand and more. For, for elephant tusk. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. And, and, it's and per, a, per gram. 
and and you, you know the amount of suffering that goes into into you, you, you know them actually poaching that animal and killing the animal just for the for the for the for the elephant tusk it's 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 very sickening it is sickening so one of the methodologies we use to try and make money is what we call um, observing conservation so um, most of our rhino and uh, um, our other top species have um, either collars or sense sensors in them so that we can monitor and track them and protect them like we've got um, a person that is every day trying to locate and see each and every rhino via telemetry um, what when we do these collarings um, or sensor implants we invite the public to come and join us so for a small fee, you form part of a small elite group. We put you on a game drive. You see how the chopper darts the animal. You actually, if it's a rhino, go there. The men usually help us carry water to cool it down. The women usually look at the rhino's feet and say, oh, shame, look at this rough feet. And um, they want to give it a pedicure. <laughs> um, you know, and everybody touches the rhino, feels it and... Most of the time, you're so, so, so just in awe to see this wonderful animal. Yes. I recently had a woman there that came from um, um, sitting with the gorillas, and she was crying. She said, this was a, a more awesome experience than what I've had with the, with the um, gorillas. Wow. And um, out of thanks for being here, we would like to invite you and Anna-Marie to one of our uh, future rhino coloring so that you can also experience it and and give us your opinion because for us it's every time is special thank you very no, much I we would love the team to come with and, and and have that special experience thank we you we're going very to do much. it yes thank, thank you because i know the tracking of those animals after they've been chipped or collared is it on a program that you can constantly monitor mm. it where you can see the moment there's no movement explain to me it's uh, there's two different programs so um on the one program where we track the animals, uh, it's not available for, well, for public. We do it for ourselves. But like with the um, uh, lions, lions often after they've eaten sleep for a very, very long time, you know, uh, especially the males. I don't know why males are always <laughs> sleeping more. But <laughs> any case, so um, you you don't always know that the animal is dead. Um, you know, you, alive or dead. Yes, I understand so what you say. When you get there, it time. might be too late. Um, that um, we've got access to. But in terms of the rhino monitoring, it's a totally different program. And it is extremely well protected because obviously something like that, if, if, if an outside person can hack the program and, and get the access location, to the location, then yes, it's a problem. It's a, it's a huge problem. So we try and protect that data. But isn't there an <coughs> app in Denuking we people can actually report to say the way they yes. on the self-drive. So they report. Isn't that a dangerous thing? No. Um, you will see that on that app, um, we, if there's a sighting of a rhino um, reported, we take away the geolocation. Okay. okay. So that makes sense. Um, we also ask people to not geolocate uh, rhino, especially rhino sightings. Okay. Um, okay. But That's yeah, a, danger. a lot of visitors use the app. We've uh, recently, um, um, in uh, April, we've launched our first Dino King magazine, which we is electronic magazine, which we give to all the visitors on a QR code. You download the QR code or the link, and it gives them wonderful information about animals, what they can do, what they can see. Um, it invites them. There's even a video clip there of a, of a rhino coloring. Okay. So in the next magazine, we'll probably have a video clip about the uh, um, cheetah that just had two cubs and they are so cute and furry. I tell you, they're just beautiful. Incredible. Incredible. Amazing work. Yeah. Sir, thank you very much. This has been very informative. But before we go, how can people in the area get involved? There's a lot of people that, that, that have a passion like you do for, uh, for nature and for, for the environment and for our wild animals. Is there a website that they can go to and volunteer their time? Because, I mean, yes. you need stuff to be done. <clears throat> Bobby, there is a web website, Dinu King uh, Game Reserve. Firstly, Dinu King is an area, a yes. huge area. D 
Tunuken Game Reserve is our website and um, they can get a lot of information there. Um, they can also send us an email. My email address is very simple, hartog at dinukingreserve.co.za. It's also on the website. And first of all, people can come and visit. And if they want to get more involved, we um, are an NPO, so I can give somebody a certificate if he feels the need to donate money. Um, especially our uh, OPU people are mostly neat. Um, vehicles, um, we've got a, a, a dog team, you know, there's always a need for dog food. Um, we've got a vet that volunteers his time to help. But um, anybody that wants to come and spend time, come and enjoy it and become part of nature, become part of it. It's all absolutely a wonderful time to invest. As I said, with proclamation just around the corner, buy your property now. After proclamation, prices are going to get up. Thank you very much. We and we'll make sure that we put all the information website, your email address at the bottom of the video and people can get into contact with you and, and become more involved. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thank Anne-Marie, you. Bobby, been a pleasure. Thank you. If you guys enjoyed this segment and you got value out of it, please leave us a comment and hit the like button. Please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell. Thank you very much. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.